Hi everyone, welcome back to Geeks for Geeks. In this video, we will discuss the problem combination sum two. Let us read the problem statement and understand it. So basically, the problem says that you will be given an array of integers, and the name of the array is arr. The length of the array is n. So basically, there are n integers inside this array, and you have been given another integer k. So we have to find out the unique combinations in the array where the sum is equal to k. Okay, and each number can be used exactly once. So basically, you cannot use duplicate elements. For example, if you have an array and you have got multiple elements uh, which have the same value. For example, if there is an element five and five is occurring multiple times, so you should only use one five and not multiple fives. Okay, so if you see the sample example, let's say if you have got the sample test case as what? Let's say one. Then you have got two. Then you have got three. Okay. Then you have got three, and then you have got five. Okay. Now, if you see here, let's say you have got the k value as how much? Let's say seven. So, if you want to make the sum as seven, right? So, if you want to make the sum as seven, so in this particular case, you can understand. Let's say if I will change the color of the second three, and I'll make it as three. So, basically, one of the ways that I can uh, get the sum as seven is what? I can take one. Then I can take uh, the uh, pink three. Sorry, the purple three. So, I can take this. and then i can take this that's how i can make the sum as 7 now another chance could have been that i could have taken 1 then i could have taken 3 and 3 basically i could have taken the pink 3 okay if i would have taken the pink 3 also then my sum would have been 7 as well now you can easily see that i am not allowed to repeat because if you will see here uh, 1, 3 is uh, only 1, 3, 3 is written only one time so that is why i cannot repeat the same element so what i need to do is i need to sort the array first of all if it is not sorted and then after that we'll iterate and if you are iterating now so whenever you are at the ith element so if the i and i minus 1th element will be the same then you can skip using the ith element because you will not use an element more than once right for example if 3 is there so you can use the first 3 as many times as you require but after that next uh, whatever number of th times 3 will occur you can skip that because you don't want to write 1 comma 3 comma 3 and 1 comma 3 comma 3 again so that's how you can skip the duplicate elements basically if you are at a particular ith element or current element you will check if the previous element is same then you will skip the current element okay uh, this is one of the important things now since the problem is asking you to do what it is asking you to generate all possible ways so basically generating all possible ways means nothing but recursion and we have to try and uh, get all the possible combinations that can be there since we have to try all possible combinations one by one so we will put the elements uh, one by one let's say if i am uh, starting off so what i will do is let's say if i put 1 comma 3 comma 3 inside my answer okay then after that what will happen is i have to pop out the elements as well so i have to backtrack because uh, after like if uh, one of the choices is that i can skip the element another choice is that i can take the element so whenever i'm taking the element then after that i uh, i am inserting it inside the answer so i have to pop it out as well because another answer will be what 2 comma 5 and for that whatever elements i have inserted i need to pop them out so basically if i am inserting something or pushing something inside the array answer array so i have to pop it out as well so basically this is nothing but the concept of backtracking here now whenever you will be uh, starting suppose that you have the indexes from 0 to n minus 1 so for choosing the very first element you have how many choices you have got n choices total because you can either choose the 0th element as your starting element or 1th or 2th up till the n minus 1th okay so basically at any point of time if you will observe let's say if you have to choose the first element of your sequence so initially you will have 0 to n minus 1 index okay and you can choose any element as your first index uh, first element okay then after that suppose if you choose the zeroth element as your uh, uh, first element then after that what will happen if you choose the zeroth element as your first element then after that for the next element you will have the indexing from 1 till n minus 1 so for the second element if you can see here what i can do is for the first element for choosing the very first element i have a choice that i can i can either to choose the zeroth element 1th 2th up till n minus 1th right so i can run a loop for that starting from the zeroth index suppose if i choose the zeroth index then after that after that i can do what for choosing the second element i have the choice from the 1th index 
till the n minus 1th index. Suppose if I had chosen 1th uh, index here as the first element, then after that for choosing the second index, I would have the choice from where? From you can say, uh, let's say uh, 2 to n minus 1. So you can understand that this is a recursive uh, diagram and whenever I am uh, choosing, so I can choose from the current index till n minus 1 and at any point of time. For example, in the starting, I can choose from 0 till n minus 1. Uh, suppose if I choose the 0th, then next time I can choose from 1 till n minus 1. Obviously, I can repeat the elements as well. So so next time I can say that for choosing the second element, I can have the choice from 0 till n minus 1th element as well. So one of the things that is very clear is that inside the recursive function for choosing a particular element, uh, I always have the choice from the current index till the last index, right? And uh, this is how we can do it. So let us uh, see this sample test case. So let's, so let's say if we have got what? Let's say we have got 1, then after that we have got uh, 2, then we have got 3, then we have got 3 and then after that we have got 5, okay? Suppose that uh, this is the array that we have got and our k value is how much? Let's say my k value is nothing but 7 here, okay? So let's say my k value is 7, so I want the sum as 7. So what can we do here? Initially, if you will see, so the starting index will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So initially my current index would be 0 only, right? So then after that, if I take the element at the 0th index, then my target will become what? I wanted the sum as 6. Since I'm taking the element 1, so you can see that inside my answer array, I'll put uh, 1 and then my k value will become how much? k value will reduce by the element that I have taken. So it will basically become how much? It will basically become nothing but 6 here. Right, that is what is going to happen. Then next time I can take uh, the elements from where to where. I can take from the index uh, 1 till the index 4. So I can either take 2, 3, 3 or 4. So basically next time my index will be what? 2. Okay, so since I can... Uh, uh, since I can choose from amongst these elements. So let's say if I choose the element 2, then what will happen? If I choose the element 2, then my answer will become what? It will become 1, 2 and my k value will become nothing but, uh, let's say, uh, 3 here, right? Uh, sorry, my k value will become, if I choose th uh, 2, then my k value will become nothing but 4 here, right? Now, after this particular part uh, happens, so you can, okay, I've not been given 5, I've been given, uh, sorry, I've not given, been given 4. I've been given five here, right? So if you will see here, now from here onwards, if even if you keep on choosing, so next time for the choices, you have the element three, three and five, okay? If you choose three, uh, the element three, then the K value will become how much? It will become nothing but one. And then after that, you have to choose the element five. So you will not be able to make the sum because if you want the sum as one later on and you have the element five, so you cannot make it, right? So this will not be possible. And uh, you can say that from this particular call, you will not get anything. But instead of this, what you do is if you are here and you choose the element, uh, let's say you skip the element 2 and you choose 3 as your, uh, this particular element as your element, then what will happen? You will have 1, then you will have 3 here. Okay. Now, once you have got uh, 1, comma 3 uh, right here, then your k value will become how much? Your k value becomes nothing but, you can say, your k value becomes nothing but 3 here. Now, you want 3 more. Again, you will choose uh, the element 3 and then you will get the subset 1, 3, 3 and your k value will become 0. The moment your k value becomes zero, then you can store this subset, right? And since you have pushed, so whenever you'll be going back, so you have to pop out the element. So for choosing a particular element, uh, you will have the choice from the current index till the last index, okay? And once you're done with that, then you can move to the next index. You can call the recursive call uh, for the next index. That's how you can store all the answers. So let's try and quickly implement this uh, solution right here and see how it will be done. So what we can do here is, first of all, we have to declare one, uh, uh, vector v which will be storing temporarily all the answers so let's say vector int uh, v okay then we also need a list of list why we need a list of list because at the end of the day we want to store everything all right or all the answers here now after this what I need to do is I need to sort my array so I'll sort the array from the beginning till the end okay so once I have uh, done this so once my array is sorted then what will I do I'll say that let's call a recursive function and initially we are going to start from the zeroth index. I'll pass the target as k itself, right? And then I'll pass the array, then I'll pass the answer array and I'll pass the vector v as well. Now once my answer is prepared, then I just need to do what? Then I just need to return my list of lists, that is the answer, okay? Now after this, what we will uh, do here is, we have to complete our recursive function. So we can say that it will have the return type of void in nature because in this I'm going to uh, store the list only. So what I'll do here is I'll call the recursive function and I'll uh, I'll have the current index, let's say current index here. Then after that, I'll have the K value. Then after that, I will have what? I will have the vector int uh, ampersand ARR. So I'll pass the original array. 
then I need to pass the list of uh, list here. Okay, then after that I'll pass the uh, V array as well. Okay, so once this part is done, so I'll check. What will I check? Now, if it happens that my K value becomes zero. So after taking a particular element, if my K value becomes zero, so this means the current wheel is that I'm having, it is one of the answers. So I can say that I need to do it. Uh, I need to do what? I need to push this thing inside my answer. So I'll push this current list uh, inside my answer and then I will simply return from here. Now, otherwise, uh, what can I do? So otherwise I can say that for choosing uh, the current element, what is the choice? So I have the choice that I can choose anything from the current index till the last. So I can say that I have a choice from the current index. So I start from the current index, let's say till I is less than the size of the array. So I start from the current index till I is less than ARR dot size. And then after that, I'll do I plus plus. Now, once this is done, so I also need to check that if suppose that uh, I am having the current index. So I have a choice from choosing the current index till the end. So I always want to do what if I am running. So I will check if the I minus one element, if it is the same as the I -th element, then what do we need? Uh, we need to skip that because we are not allowed to use the duplicate uh, elements, right? So that's why we are going to do this. And when we are doing this, so we'll always check that I value should be greater than the current index here. Okay. Now, once this is done, then after that, uh, what you will do is uh, if you are at the current element, so you inside your answer, you will do what you will push back uh, nothing but what you are going to push back the element that is ARR of I. Okay. And then you will call the recursion for the next index. So you will pass what you will pass the index as I plus one, you will pass the target. Then after that, uh, sorry, uh, you will pass K minus ARR of I. And then after that, you will pass the array here. Okay. Then you'll pass the answer and then you'll pass the uh, vector v. So inside the v vector will push this. Okay. Now once this is done, so we can do what we can do v dot pop back here. Okay. So let's try and run it. And I need to write and here. So let's write arr here. Let's try and submit. I hope it will get accepted. Let's see. Okay. So it is not working fine here. There is some issue with my code. Okay, so another thing that we should check is that if the suppose if what happens is if the uh, ith element that I am at, okay, if it is uh, greater than my k value, then I need to break away from him. So this is one mistake that I was making. Now let's try and submit this. Now it will get accepted. Okay, so yeah, basically whenever the ith element becomes greater than k, it's not possible. So you can break away to save time. Now you can see that this code gets accepted. I hope that you have understood this clearly. Uh, thanks for watching this video and keep coding guys. Thank you.